Oh, clutch is different. Oh yeah, it feels nice. This is a friggin' good deal. <laughs> I got the 701. So it's a 701 with an Omega kit. Uh, Brendan's tower. Uh, so it's got 28 litres of juice on board. Brendan set it all up with his GPSs and a tablet. Um, obviously he's got a first aid kit shoved in there. So yeah, lovely setup. He's just put a a different gearbox in it so a wider ratio gearbox in this baby um, uh, I felt like that uh, he it, it could be a little bit better of a touring bike I think was his plan and um, so yeah he's put a different gearbox in I'll drop up the name of it I'm not sure what it's called I'll put it up on the screen but what an opportunity hey to ride a 701 all set up with an Amiga kit I'm loving this straight away very similar to um, uh, Chris's that I rode probably about eight months ago. Yeah. The video want. going. So this is Chris. This is the bloke who sold me the motorbike. What a beautiful bike. At a really good price. I'm happy as happy as Larry. I'm happy as you, mate. So him and me are out. He's on his 701. What's the kit, Chris? Uh, it's the hard kits, the Australian made hard kits kit. I bought it off a nice fella called John Travado from Queensland and he's um, fully decked her out. Done everything. It's even got the Nova wide ratio gearbox and you know bits and pieces. But um, unfortunately during COVID we haven't had much time. To really good yeah. but, um, Did I? Got a lovely feel, lovely cockpit. Oh, this is no good though. I can't rev the thing out. Yeah, g'day guys. Steve here from Dirt Bike ADV. Um, just uh, riding Brendan 701 here, and um, yeah. I do talk a little bit about the bike, it's you know, but at, after a 15 minute ride, you can't offer too many insights. Really, you can only talk about how it feels and how it rides, and and that's about it. You can't do any sort of review. Um, so I, it's a very very similar situation with uh, when I rode Chris's bike. You can't offer too much information without sort of pulling the bike down, owning the bike for a long time, and those sorts of things. So they're only just a bit of an insight into the bike. But uh, this video was all about uh, Brendan 701 and so you'll see later in the video we I interview Brendan or just have a chat with Brendan and walk around his bike and it's a very good insight into how to set up a 701 and why Brendan set it up the way he did and um, and uh, the, the benefits and uh, of, of all the things that he's done. So his bike is probably up there with one of the best adventure bikes on the market. Um, obviously we've got... Um, Probably three contenders in this market, the DR650, the AJP PR7 and, and the uh, 69701 or Gas Gas 700s now. Um, all those bikes start out under 150 kilos, but obviously if you want a bit of wind protection and some longer range tanks and uh, rear racks and pannier racks and all that sort of stuff, they end up being a lot heavier. Um, certainly with Brendan's bike all set up with the Amiga kit on um, at about 12 litres and so probably not quite 300 kilometres of range but he did have his Andy Straps panniers on his bike come up to 180 kilos with the Amiga kit on it so yeah so it starts to creep up there but obviously we're still well below the likes of a, a T7 or a uh, an 890 or a BMW 850 or or a two reg or all those sorts of bikes so um yeah that you are still what i call an adventure bike so not a touring bike obviously those uh, those middleweight touring bikes um can be used for adventure bikes if you're a, a fit young man and obviously an expert level rider um that's that's what they do you see the guys riding around using them as adventure bikes but for the average punter like myself i'm only an intermediate level rider um they're just way too heavy um so yeah, I'll be looking to um, obviously continue my search for an 890, sorry, a 690 or a 701, or possibly even an AJP over the, over the coming months. Just trying to get back into that adventure bike. Um, I have actually sold the Tanneray 660 now. Just decided it was way too heavy, and um, yeah, it's a bit of a shame. If I if I had the room in the shed, I'd probably just go to a three bike policy and would have kept the Tanneray. It was a bloody beautiful bike, a really nice bike, but very heavy, and and I didn't really feel inclined to go off the road particularly when I was by myself. So anyway, guys, hang around, watch Brendan's video and um, watch Brendan talk about his bike. And it's, it's a great insight and, uh, yeah, we'll hope to see you out on the trail soon. <laughs>
Brendan knows this intro. G'day guys, it's Steve from Dirt Bike ADV. We're out at my mate's Brendan's place. We're here to discuss whether I think he's got the best adventure bike at the moment on the market. Um, we've got a 2018 701. It's just a whisker modified. It's just had a couple of little things done to it. But um, I've got Brendan wired up. So Brendan's going to walk around the bike and I'm going to do a bit of filming. Just basically talking about uh, the things that the bike's got done. So it's got an Omega kit and it's got racks and it's got uh, long range tanks. And, and he's got his own navigation set up as well too. So Brendan, I'll let you take over, mate. And uh, just start to tell us all about your little baby here, mate. mate. Uh, well, it started off as a 701 2018. I bought it in about Christmas time 2018, and that's gee, the years are screaming by now, aren't they? Yep. But I didn't modify it straight away. I rode it around as just an enduro bike for a little while. Yep. Uh, well, just in its stock trim. Um, it's not an enduro bike. It's just a big dirt bike. Um, but that said, it, just the sheer power of it um, is amazing, and you can put a pillion on it, and it will handle a pillion. And, uh, and I have taken my daughter, for example, from here across to Benella, yep. across through the mountains and back on it. Yep, that's right over the high country, on the yeah, edge of the high yeah, country, so, yep. And things like that, it'll do quite happily where yep. the KDM 500 won't do that kind of work. Yep, yep. Um, so yeah, and it'll eat up the miles is the other thing. So this is uh, sort of a gift to myself, this thing. I'm the first to admit that it's expensive and it's not for everyone. I bought it in bits and pieces and opportunities while going through a nasty separation. So this is what kept me sane. <laughs> I was just buying little bits. And blokes, being blokes, will understand why I say that. Yep. And um, who have been through the nasty side. Yep. And likewise, the Amiga kit. Um, I did it for I did a job in the United States, or for people in the United States, where yep. payment was a problem. Yep. Um, so a box of bits from via South Africa turned up instead. <laughs> What's the Amiga kit worth, mate? Oh, I don't know, but it, they're, they're dear. Like it's ten thousand dollars. Right, oh, yeah, it's an yeah. insane amount of money. Yeah, because there's a lot of carbon fiber and yeah, stuff in there. Yeah, carbon fiber. There's yeah. a lot of. Um, you can see the carbon fiber in the protection plates and up in the headstock yeah, there yeah, and everything yeah. like that. Yep. Yeah. And even on. the resin tanks and things yep. like that. They're, yep. they're a work of art. All yep. those type of things. Yep. Um, you know, I looked at Aurora kits and and kit six ninety kits and things like yep. that at the time. Yep. And they're all much the muchness at the time. Um, so horses for courses. Yep. You know, yep. What goes yep. On. I think it's probably one of the better ones on the market, but you've got to pay the price. That's yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. That said, putting it on is not straightforward. Yep. It, it's not something you do in an afternoon and yep. go riding the next day. Yep, yep. Um, it's not something you take on and off the bike. Yeah, I remember the time either. dropping in and seeing it in pieces at different stages. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was so, basically stripped down to the bare frame, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, down to the bare frame. Yep. So when you look at things that have happened, just starting with the stock 701, um, when they come from the factory. They come with miles too much preload on the rear. Yep. Um, and the rear's got miles too much compression damping, makes it handle funny. And the stock Explore forks, they've got a weird thing that they'll blow through the stroke every now and then. Yep. And for me, I'm a heavy bloke. Yep. Um, you know, there's 120 kilos on top of this thing. Yep. And going real fast and anything, you land it, all yep. of a sudden you wonder, so it's a bit unpredictable. Is that valving, Brendan? Or? So, well, the thing is, I've always had trouble getting yep. um, Explore and four. CS forks to work for me. Yep. To the point that I don't even bother trying to tune them. Oh right, okay, yep. yep. Um, I just throw them in the bin and um, the internals. Yep. And uh, this has got Race Tech uh, gold valves. So oh yes, yep. They're, they're conventional cartridges. Yep. They're done by Clive. Yep. I think they call him the professor. <laughs> yep. Um, so Michael's motorcycle biz just put them in the post and they come back. Yep. So these are conventional forks. Yep. Um, just oh. yeah. Yep. World of difference yep. for me for tunability. Yep. Um, that said, you've got to remember, it's still a big dirt bike. Yes, I agree. It is a dirt bike. And I agree. They start out as a dirt bike. Yep. like an enduro bike. Yep. It's a different riding style altogether. Yep. And when I've spent a lot of time on this, or a lot of time on the KDM 500, it takes a fair bit of adjustment. Yep. They're nothing like each other. Yep, right. Yep. So, <clears throat> some stats about it. Wings exhaust yep. on it. Um, it holds 28 litres of fuel. Right. So there's 13 in the back. Yep, that's the standard uh, tank 13 standard litres. Tank yep. in the back. Yep. Um, and there's seven and a half in each of the sides. Yep. The Amiga kit takes the fuel pump out of the back tank. Oh, right. And it's actually in the front right tank. Yeah, there you go. I didn't so know that. Yeah. Fuel management of it, <laughs> it's a work of art. Yep. Um, like to fill it up. If you just filled it up, fuel would run out the breathers because yep. of the height differences. Yep, yep. So you've got to turn the back tank off and yep. then you've got to remember to turn it on. Yep. And the way I manage the fuel is um, 
when the fuel light comes on, yep. I know there's 50 k's of fuel left in the back tank, so yep. I'll isolate the back tank then, yep. and then run it till she stops, and then once I hit 50 k's left. Yep. Um, depending on what you're doing, um, you get 550 k's out yeah. of it. Yeah, well that's awesome isn't it? If you yep. start pushing headwinds or doing yep. silly stuff in deep sand, of course it curtails that a fair bit. Yep. Yep. Um, and it carries its weight really well. Yeah, I've noticed you've had Colin on the back. Um, yeah. Colin's probably a good uh, 70 kilos, is he? Oh, he would be now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've seen Colin on the back. One of Steve's previous videos, we yes, went around the Murray Sunset. Yes, that's right. going to say that. I've got video, footage some, of you doing that. Yep. We're doing some group fuel management. <laughs> and I had the containers on the side of the panniers. So I had 10 litres on each side of the panniers. Yep. And I left Nurbeen with a full load. Yep. With my son, it would have been 50 or 60 kilos of pee on the back. Yeah, that's right. She was loaded, yep. and I won't say that it was happy. Yep. Um, they never are when they're that much loaded. Yep. But it was manageable. Yeah, that's right. That's and the main thing. It wasn't doing any, you know, nightmare deaths, yep. steers, or anything like yep. that. Yep. 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 So, um, so yeah, that's uh, that's right up. You know, if you can carry that much fuel, take uh, Colin off the back, and you can carry that bit of extra fuel, yeah. you're actually able to do the canning stock route, really, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, it's the yep. first time that I've seen a bike that you'd actually say. Yep. This is a canning Stop solo right. or can unsupported do it, Which is a thousand machine. k's for people who live and overseas. It's a thousand k's between uh, fuel stops. Yeah, that's so, right. Yep. Oh, don't worry. There's lots of challenges to say, but yep. the bike's capable of it without yep. handling yep. like a pig. Cool, cool. Um, yep. And just while we're on the back end of the bike, yep. that's a Perun Moto, yep. I think. Perun Moto, yep. That's right. And that's how I pronounce them, yeah. Yep. So that's an alloy thing. Yep. These are Barrett. Um, side racks, yep. but I've modified them to fit properly. They didn't fit the bike when I yep. got them. Yep. And I made little adapters and yep. little things in here, little ferrules. Yep. So the two bolt together. And they go down onto the um, yeah. pillion passenger points yep. there, so super, super strong. And they're yep. they're actually probably bracing the subframe almost. Yeah, and that aren't was they? part of it. Yep. Now, yeah. This is heavy. Yep. Um, and I thought, well, do you go from Moscow set up and things yep. like that? Yep. And you probably can. Um, I'm not a fan of the amount of times people burn through their yes, things correct. with yeah, those things. Yeah, yeah. Um, but also find the anti straps bags yep. are very good yep. for what I do. They're a local, they're a local made bag in here in Melbourne, down yep. in Melbourne, yeah. So, yeah. and just to show you what's possible, these are just stowed on the bike, there's nothing in them at the moment. Yep. And they're a bit wet because we gave the bike a bit of a tub before we brought it out. Yep. But, yep, two of them. Yep, that's right. So what I'd note for the young players is the bag centre of gravity is forward of the back axle. Yes, yes, and, yes. Oh yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah. And, right on. Yep. But they're also not close enough to cause your boots any harm. Correct, yep. yep. So oh, also, the... I put them on there. Oh yeah, you've got pillion pegs. pegs. Oh, I didn't even notice. There you go. So, yeah. because I do carry yep. the odd daughter around or something yep. like that. For or odd son, obviously. Yeah, yeah, so... That's bloody well worth, I'm looking this square on and you're right, they are spot on, you're spot on, they are forward of the axle and yep. you, you always want your panniers down low and as forward as possible you can get them without interfering with your legs and so yeah, that's bloody fantastic. So Brendan's uh, organised a couple of props. So a couple of props. Now we're seeing a lot of people at the moment burn through their fuel bladders and so dropping their fuel bladders. So this is Brendan's solution. So this just helps square out the bottom of the tank, the, yep. the bag. Now, I haven't oh. adjusted any straps because we'll just put them back on, but yep. these go down to the bottom. Hold a bit of form. Yep. And that sometimes I've used as a tub. Yep. Yep. You just want to have a freshen up. You can yep. use, throw yep. it out or whatever. Wash dishes. Yep. Yep. It's we'll useful on site. So. Versatility. I love versatility, Brendan. So yep. Yep. These are so inexpensive. Yep. There's no problem just yep. running the angle grinder through yep. them. That's right. That's just and if a you stuff one up and get it wrong, just yep. bin it. Is that a 20 litre jerry or just no, a. 10. Oh, it's one of those. Yeah, it's, it's one of those cut off. Yep. So, right. Yeah, perfect. Many years ago, that's a 10. Yep. It holds nearly 11. Yep, yep. You can put one of them in both sides. Yep. And I can put my gear. Yep. I travel light. Yep. And, you know, for you me, still to fit leave, your gear in I line. can carry 48 litres, not yep. whatever I have yep. on yep. this. Yeah, yeah. Because um, you just actually, tie your sleeping bag and tent on top, don't you? That's all um, that's on top. The only thing I put up there yep. is my tent and my chair. Oh, yeah, right. Yep, yep. I yep. never put anything up yep. heavy up the back. Correct, yep. The further back and heavier you go here, yep. the more likely your bikes to do weird steering things. Yeah, yeah. So you just don't do it. Next um, stop was a very good example of that when he went to. Yeah. Uh, sorry, mate, oh, but we're going to pick you bike. out. As soon as I saw his bike, I said, "Oh, look out!" Yeah, <laughs> it was we, very predictable. Next stop's got to get in a yeah. reference here. Is a fellow YouTuber oh. from down Melbourne, and uh, yeah. he went to the Canning Stock route with a T7, loaded up to the hilt, and everything was behind the axle, as Brendan's just pointed out, and uh, it was loaded to the hilt, and yeah. he had to and he had, had to back to out. It. Sorry, mate, just... we just threw you off the deep end. There, you're yeah. under the bus. But anyway, 
that's that's all right. He survived it, made some good calls. Yep, he made some, made a good trip out of it actually, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah. Yep. But yeah, so you chuck those in. So, so I'll just that's forty eight litres. You've yep. got different sizes. Yep, yep. Obviously, the green one's my water one. Yep, yep. I usually don't like carrying my water in one thing like that. Yep, yep. And the other thing is, is that they're always that size. Yep. But <laughs> these are so inexpensive that just say you did the Simpson and yep. the size was annoying you. Yep, yep. Oh well, you just chuck it on the fire and yep. come home. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, right. Yeah, yeah. Or or give it to someone at uh, Birdseal or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. It's just. Oh, that, I'm a big fan of that because um, riding with Tom did it. He did that when he went. Um, he just bought some jerry cans at uh, Alice Springs, I think, to do yep. do the Hay River and the um, and the, the so, Simpson. You know, so yeah, I've makes never sense. Really useful ladders, yep. steel ladders. I've never been a fan of them. Yep. Um, they, ne they never mount to the bike properly. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. Cool. So, but that so we thought with two of those and um, the two the, big, the, two the big ones and what's in there. Yep. So you're looking at just under 50 litres of yeah, juice. Yeah, right, okay, wow. So that's yeah, yeah. the 1,000 K range. Yep, that's right. right, yeah, that's the canning stopper. And it takes a bit of space in your back. Yep. yep. Um, but yep. So it's all compromised. Yep. There's nothing perfect for yep. whatever you're doing. But it's rare for you to load up like that. Yeah, that's right, I, yeah. I can carry my fuel, no problem, yep. in the tanks. And the thing is, Brendan, as you burn fuel, you get rid of the fuel, you know, so yeah, 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 yeah that's yep. right, yeah. Yep. So the, I'm a big fan of pannier racks um, if, you, if you can justify it on a bike and I'm looking at this you know and um, you've got plenty of clearance around everything and plenty of um, give and take there so and of course uh, they don't they don't surrender when you um, uh, when you sort of drop it yep. they are very strong and robust these are strong I've yep. shifted this bar up high yep um, I probably could have narrowed them up yep. a little bit an yep. inch I just say an inch either side but yep. Yep. everything it is wide yep. when it's fully loaded and packed yep. out yeah, it's not as wide as my Tenere, mate, I can tell you that. Yeah, yeah. My Tenere in stock form is super, super wide, so, yeah, um, yeah. You can't go past a wings exhaust. Yep, yep, for so the, wings exhaust, the Amiga money, kit, Barrett racks. For the noise, yep, yep. Um, they just tick all the boxes. Yep, that's right, yeah. I can't justify thousands yep. on an Acropovic, it's just yep. like, it's just insanely expensive. Yeah, that's right, yeah, the wings are the default one. Barrett's are the defaults for Tenere, yep. um, Tenere 660s, but uh, when it comes to the 701s and the 690s, the wings exhausts are the good. Yep. I found mine fantastic, not too noisy. So keep going. Ditch the fuel cap yep. block. Yep. So that's just in a service. Yep, yep, cap. Uh, yep, so there's no, no yep. dramas there. Yep. Um, when I pack stuff, it only goes to there. Yep. Um, I've always, I never pack stuff in behind me. I've yep. always got the ability to move on the seat. That's correct, yeah, particularly and if you're riding sand. If you're going sand, you've yeah. got to be able to yep. sit back. Yep, correct. And the other thing you'll notice about this, it's not a cockpit, it's a sit on top yep. bike. Yep, um, You've got a lot of room up forward yep. and everything. Yep. And you get, I get on like your Tenere, for example. Yep. It was really bizarre to sit in a cockpit. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. For me, yeah. Yeah. where it's one size fits all, and so like, oh, okay, it's just a, just a different machine for a different purpose. That's very much the difference between a touring bike. And an adventure bike, uh, Brendan, in my opinion, you know, so, 150 kilos, they're an adventure bike. If they start life out at 150, and by the way, we've weighed this bike, it come in just over 160. Uh, so with that's, we, that's we've calculated, yep, as it stands at the moment with those. Um, and we uh, reckon little, there's about 12 litres of fuel in it. Yeah, so it's a little bit low on fuel to get the 300k range, but um, we've allowed for that. So it's just in the low 160. So yeah, that's a pretty good uh, adventure bike, really, considering yep. I just looked up before I came here, the 890 started at 195. The yep. T7 started about 190 before, oh, that's dry, yeah, before yeah, fuel yeah. and racks and everything like that. So they're yeah. well over 200 kilos um, by the time you get them set up. And with fuel in them, they're, they're reaching right into it. Yeah, look at the storm coming. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think they're tracking that way. Yeah, that's amazing. Anyway. Yeah, um, so we talked about the Amiga kit. Well, the Amiga kit includes uh, the tanks, the shrouds, the, the, the carbon yeah, yeah, fiber bash plates and the headstock up carbon there. Carbon fiber bash yep. plate. Yep. And um, there's a little brackets at the front. Yep. The tank shrouds. Yep. Um, Resin seat, tanks. The yep. seat. Oh, it does come with the seat. Okay, yeah, the right. Seat. Up. Yep. Um, the fairing covers and the front thing. Yep. Yep. Um, it's also got the low mount guard. Yep. And they look cool. Yep. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. I would hate to be caught on the high plane. Yeah, that's rains. right. Yeah, in some so, of the black soil country so or something. I went yeah. To the, yeah. Like as a rule, yeah. the front wheel's got to turn. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Um, yep. It's got just KDM the wide pegs. From yep. They're standard. Like the KDM ones. Yep. What are they called? The um oh, oh, mm, the, the rally pegs. Rally right. pegs. Yeah, the rally pegs. Yep. Yep. So what else has been done? There's the X trig adjuster. Yep. Off of the suspension. Suspension. Yep. Because yep. You so you can get stick hands it in there otherwise. You get a little eight mil or eight yeah. mil socket in there. Yep. yep. And yep. that's been good. You can just adjust the preload. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And yep. I found it was good because 
the bike's very sensitive in its steering to the amount of preload you got on the rear. Yep, yep, all and bikes are. Yep. When we were up at the Snow River that time, I was playing yep. with it. Yep, yep. And I just went one way or the other and yep. just realised that, oh, hang on, she's steering properly now. Yeah, right, yeah. So yep, yep, much yep. happier. Yep, yep, cool, cool. So up here, you've got Scott Damper and the vibration. I'll go around the other side, mate. Oh, I forget what it's called. Yep. So. I think that's an X Trig as well, is it? Or no, oh, it's uh, I don't know. Um, BRP. BRP. That yeah. was the brand. Yeah. The, they, this bike standard is vibey through the. Yep. And being you, a big single. Yep. Yeah, and um, you, you get tingly in your hands. Has this got the second counterbalance in it? Six, yes, it has. It has. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yep, so yep, even cool. despite that, the yep. vibration through the bars yep. was noticeable. Yeah, particularly on open yep. roads. Yeah, when so, you're just sitting there uh, cruising along doing five thousand revs. Yeah. One thing we can do yep. is the seat comes off easily because yep. I'll show you the airfield to set up. Right. On. So, oh wow, well, nice big air filter. So this is the change. Yep. And same thing, the yep. name of the air filter. Yep. Um, rot wheeler? No. Looks like a rot wheeler. Anyway, it doesn't no, matter. No, yep. it's, um, but that's the standard air box. Power isn't cell, it? power cell. No, it's not a standard air box. Oh right, okay. That's a replacement one. Looks looks standard, yeah. Yeah. You can put the Rade five yep. litre tank in there. Yeah, but yep. I've got enough fuel already. Yep, you don't need it. And yep. the bigger air filter Absolutely. Less was, air filter change, was more it? important to yep. me. Yep. And it's high on yep. the bike as well. Yep. The only downside is there's a lot of induction noise. Yeah, right, okay. It can be, this bike's quite noisy and fatiguing. Yep. Um, at road speeds, especially yep. after you've had a big day. Yep, right. Yep. And uh, Yeah, we all know that noise fatigues everyone. Yeah, yeah so. so at the start you think it doesn't matter, but yep. that said, yep. when you're on it, yep. it's loud. Yeah, yeah. But if you're just cruising along at your 110, it's yep. not so loud. Yeah, yeah. But if you start pushing into a headwind and stuff like that, yep. it's just all the yep. fatigue adds up on you. Yeah, that's right. Yep. So steering Scott steering man with some BRP vibration mounts there. You've yep. got your standard old uh, Garmin Montana, is it? Yep. Yep, up there on the handlebars. Yeah, this is this is the relied upon device. Yep. Um, they always go. Yep. The maps always work. Yep. And when it comes to chasing a pink line and knowing that the map's there. Yep. So that's why that lives on the bars. Yep, right. Um, that's uh, old reliable. Yep. Yep. So that's just the standard. Um, dash. Yep. And Everyone then, will recognise that Husky KDM dash. Yep. Yep. And that's an A7 Samsung tablet. Yep. yep. Hasn't been used for a while. It mightn't be charged. Yep. I don't worry about it too much. Yep. Now there it goes. Now yep. the reason I use that is they're so inexpensive. Yep. That if you kill one, yep. you just buy another one. Yeah. Correct. Yep. Throw it in the bin. Yep. Now that's got charged. It's beaming up. Yep. And I put it on there for the purpose. It's got an electronic road book on it. Yep. Because I did the open road rally. And, yep. Right. Cool. cool. And yeah, I don't yep. mind doing. Yep. You know, road book work. Yep, yep. And um, the other thing is, is the Bluetooth of this stores the Spotify. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. So it talks to the helmet. Yep, yep And yep. everything runs off that. Play your chains. Yeah, so. Yep. And of course, you can see the screen a lot easier yep. when you're and riding. Yeah. Gaia maps are wonderful, providing that you can get the right map downloaded onto your correct. machine. Yes, so, correct. And that's yeah, always yeah. been the challenge. Yep. yep. I use a combination of Gaia and HEMA maps. So, yep. But that's the, the uh, carbon fibre tower that came with the Omega kit as well, too. Yep. You've obviously got heated grips there, and I see you've got an in-reach mini on the other side mounted all up there. So yeah, but yep. you can see the way this mounts into the headstock there. It's absolutely brilliant, isn't it? And it's super light, all carbon fibre. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. So. Yeah, very good. The tablet's just about out of charge because yep. it's sitting. Right, oh yeah. It's got seven percent charge yeah. on it. It's a very similar size tablet to an AJP PR7. Yeah, they've got a very similar size so, tablet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, you've got the dashboard on there, beautiful kilometers and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I don't use it that much. Yeah. But um. um so if I had that, I'd load down my um, Hema Maps downloadable version, yep. four by four maps, and so I've always got that on that on the actual. Um, Yep. on the actual tablet, you know, yeah, no matter yeah, whether yeah. I've got reception or not. Guy is good, but you need to download the right maps yeah, or yeah, you've got I to have reception. Yeah, I found that problematic. I found it unreliable. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Cool, cool. So, you, did, you don't count on it. Yep. Um, Oxford heater grips. Yep. Those are things. Yep. Um, uh, what do they call these? Uh, mirrors? Double, double take mirrors, double yep. Double take mirrors. Yep. The only problem with them is I fold them down all the time and yep, you just got to be careful they don't rub on yeah, each other. Yeah, right, yep, 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 yep. Here comes hey, the storm. Here comes the wind. Yeah, look at this storm over here. That's amazing, isn't it? Must know, must be just a dirt bike ADV attracting the bad weather, I reckon. That's quite spectacular, isn't it? Yeah, cool, cool. So, anyway. So, so it's an Amiga kit, it's a Barrett Racks, it's yep. a Perrin rear, rear, um, rear rack. Yep. You've got the Bark Busters. Oxford controls. Oxford heated grips. Scott Steering Dammer. 
Baja lights. Oh, Baja lights as well. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yep. Um, the other ones that come with the Amiga kit. Yep. Oh, Squadron well, Pros, yep. Yeah, they're like um, glowworms. Yeah. <laughs> You can't yeah. ride home on it, whereas yeah. these, yeah. the only trouble is it's getting low beam yeah. low right. enough yeah, right. because people don't like you. Yeah, right. So, cool. yeah. Um, important the radiators on these, yep. you've got to set them up that nothing touches them. Yep, right. They've got to be perfect. Anything touches them, you wear a hole in them, they'll, they'll crack, they'll fatigue. Right, yeah. And cool. the other cool. one is your stone guard on the front, you've got to make sure it's open more at the bottom than it is at the top. Right, oh, yep. And oh, that yep. way if you get a stone in there, yep. it can work its way out. Yep. Because if they're the other way, yep. the stone will get in there and work its way in. Yeah. Where, where, where's yeah. a hole in the radio? Yep. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yep. Um, inreach. Yep, mini on the inside side. there, yep. And that's just there because um, on the side I've got just a USB charger. Yep, yep. And I can charge that on yep. the run. Yep. Uh, on the other side, I've got twin USB ports with the voltmeter on it. Yep, right, oh, and that's yep. got a switch on it too. Yeah, oh, yeah, right. I have so it with a switch. Yeah. That's got a voltmeter on it. Yep, yep. So what I tend to do, I get in at night, yep. and while I'm cooking tea, I'll chuck the phone on there and the um, yeah the cardo, yep. and they'll just charge. And, and because you know the voltage, you know you're not going to leave yourself yep. stranded or anything like that. Yeah, yep. cool, cool. So nice. that works all right. The ABS switch is there out of the way. Yep. And even though it's got a dongle to disable the rear, yep. they flash. Yep. And it's annoying. Yeah, right. So yep. it's around there, and I've actually coloured it in in black texture as yeah, well right. to stop yeah, it yeah. annoying me. Yep, yep. And, I did uh, notice that on my 690, they flash yep. it. Yeah, but it was a small enough not, light not to bother me. So yep. yeah. So. Yeah. On the engine side of things, it's a stock engine. There's more out, more power than you could ever want on it. Just hang on, so just talking about the engine. We're just sorry about the wind noise, guys, but we've got a storm coming, yeah. so yeah. But we'll and try and finish off. Hot one minute now. Yeah. It's windy. Yeah. It? So, so the engine, yeah. So the engine makes more power than you could believe, but it's very disappointing with KDM that they get these engines from their Duke heritage because the gearbox ratios are rubbish. Yep. Um, first is way too high, and you've got all these gears, and then the top's not all that high. You either gear it to cruise well or, or gear it so you can actually use first gear. Yep. And I found myself flipping between a 14 tooth and a 15 tooth sprocket. Yep. 14 for the high country or 15 when I'm out in the desert work. Yep. And which is just annoying. So I come across a, a Nova Racing gearbox. Yep. Uh, same thing, it's all dollars. Yep. But it's magnificent. Yeah, right. And it's cheese. Yep. yep. And that's just spreads it right out, or yeah, any of the gear ratios the same, or um, like spreads second, them right seconds out? Seconds the same, first yep. is lower, yep. and I think they're 15% or 10% different overall, yep. so the spread. Yep. And the other thing is, is the famous fault neutral thing, yep. it's gone. Right, okay, yep. And it's yep. just so smooth through the gears now. Yep. And I've actually got the 14 tooth on it at the moment, which yep. gives me the right spread of gears, yep. and it's just what it should be from KDM. Yeah, right, okay, so, yep. Um, yep, yep, yep. So, no, I'm very happy with that. Like, yep. I know it's, and it takes a bit to put them in, too. Like yep. You've got to yep. drop the engine yep. and take everything off and things like that. Yep. Just to split the cases to chuck a gearbox in. Yep. To build a rally build out of these, they probably do that by default. They just yeah. pull the bike down, you know, fit That's the gearbox it. in and, and do the rally it kit. It wasn't a bad yep. thing to work on. Yep. Um, it came across quite easily. Yep. It actually takes very little effort to drop the engine out of this. Yeah, right. Yeah, yep. you okay. think it's a nightmare, but it's actually not too bad. Yeah, just right. drop it down. Yep, yep. You're seeing it on the bench and yep. happy days. Yep. Um, tyres, do we go near that? No. Uh, heavy, it, heavy duty tubes, Yep. rim locks, yep. balanced. Yep. Extra heavy or heavy duty? Uh, just heavy duty. Yes, I go heavy duty. because yeah, I think the extras are a bit overkill. Yeah, they rip valve stands out for heavy duty, uh, yep. That's a Michelin Desert front. Yep. That's uh, probably Yep. And it's a Tractionator. I don't know which Tractionator is which, but it's yep. the hard of wearing one. Yeah, I think that's the Desert HT or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And wasn't too happy in the high country. Right, yep. Um, it's a bit skatey actually. Wasn't cooking up, yeah. But for touring work, yep. it's spot on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you, you've yeah. got to have that combination between yeah, grip yeah, and uh, longevity, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, typically 606 is for high country work. Yep. And then, oh well, Michelin Deserts, so I like them. Yep. But they're expensive. Yep. And, but these are good, you know, if you want to know that you're going to last your 6,000 k's yep. to 10,000 k's, yep. then that will do it. Yep. So yeah, same enough. thing as compromise. You want grip yep. Yep. or you want longevity. Yep. You can't have it both, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. There's nothing nothing really perfect. Cool, cool. So how do you find the wind protection, Brendan? Quite good actually. Yep. Like I find it you just cruise and sit behind it, it sort yep. of comes in the middle of the helmet for yep. me. 
Okay, yep. I find I can just dip the helmet to yep. sit under it if I, you know. That's exactly what I found on my yep. 690. Yep. Even my Tenere is the same. Yep. If you were doing a big long haul where you were just beeline it to be to Alice Springs, I'd actually take my visor off. Yep. I'd be a very happy camper, you know, because um, yeah, the yeah, visors do I'm catch a bit of wind. Fussy when it comes to such things. Yeah, like, right up. Yep. People get really hung up. Or oh, is the screen adjustable? Yeah. So like, no, yeah, right up. Fair enough. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But oh, it is nice to see it behind it. Yep. Um, the tower sits out there a long way and it's yep. vulnerable. Yep. Um, but when you look at what else it does, yep. it's nice to be able to see up high. Yep. And it's nice to sit in behind it yep. when it's cold. Um, I found out with the heated grips, I'm not pretty hot bodied anyway, but yep. if I'm getting cold, I turn the heated grips on, I'm usually some off quite yep. well. Yeah, yeah. Where other people are free, starting to freeze their left ones yep. off. Yep, fair enough. Um, yep. Because I'm just not directly in the wind yep. as yep. well. Yep. So I find that quite good. Yep, cool, cool. When you look at other things, the seat's not the most wonderful thing. I noticed that, yes. Um, I would probably have to modify that. But that said, I don't get sore on it either. Yeah, right. Yep. So, yep. you might think, oh, this is no good, to it. but I don't get sore. Yeah. Um, might be some science to it, possibly. Oh, there's so, the fuel pump in there, I can see underneath there. Yeah, yeah right on. Yep, yep. So, yep. the fuel pump's actually down in there. Oh, right. That's where the fuel exit comes out. Oh, right, okay. I thought and, that was um, the fuel pump there, right. Yeah, yep. there's yep. the fuel pump's actually down under the plate yep. at the bottom. Yep. Yeah. Yep, cool. But, um. It's a good, versatile bike, isn't it? Well, I, I do like it. Yep. You get on it, you, yep. you're quite happy cruising and just to have the capacity. Yep. Um, 550Ks, like. I think most ADV bikes, if you've got 300 to 330, yep. you'll do 90% of yep. anything in Australia. Couldn't agree and that's, more. Yep. That's, that's yep. good. Yep. But it is nice to go somewhere and not think about your fuel. Yeah, too. correct. Yeah. We've and been up into the high country with my, what was I riding? My 690, 690. with the, uh, it's just this, the Lavrado mm -hmm. tank, and yeah. you and Dino never filled up, and I had to fill up at La Cola. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, that's right. Um, with that said, you're carrying it too. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah, that's correct. Um, yeah. Horses for horses. Yep. Um, but yes, it's uh, certainly not certainly a nice looking bike, and um, uh, when, when I rode it, and I'll drop some footage of it when I rode it, I was pretty impressed with it. And uh, yeah, yep. is it the best adventure bike in the market? I think so. I think these these either the 690s or the 701s are are the yeah. bike, the best adventure bike they're, in they're the market. Dear though. Yeah, they're, they're expensive to buy. Yes, correct. And you know, I've, I spent it on this. Yep. And if you have to put all the dollars together, it's yeah. shameful. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But that but said, it, it's a labour of love, isn't it? You just yes, correct. You and um, this is what we do. This is our hobby, you know. So yeah. I don't drink, I don't smoke. So <laughs> yeah, that's right. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other thing is, of course, um, you know, you you've got all this up to a, a really nice bike now, and it can do the touring, it can do the adventure work. But the key is, um, you've probably only spent as much as what an 890 costs. So that's that's for me where it comes into, you know. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, and an 890 is a full, uh, probably about 60 kilos heavier. So, yeah. so I, I think that's you got to weigh it up, you know, that you you build a touring bike, and so yeah. I'm strong. Yep. And I've also got you know 30, 40 years experience riding dirt bikes. Yep. Um, this is a little bit tall. Yep. Um, I didn't go the 300 suspension travel. Yep. Because it's already tall enough. Yep. Um, but I'm used to balancing the bike and yep. being well, short in the legs anyway. Yep, yep. So, you know, a short rider's not going to be happy on this. Yep. A beginner's not going to be happy on this. Yes, correct, yep. But the same thing, if you point this towards Gook's track or the Simpson yep. or the Hay River, it's like, yep. oh yeah, let's go. Or the county um, stock route, yep. Or, no, we're going to Wanagata tomorrow yep. and we're going out, you know, down Butcher Country. It's like, oh yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You've got to be a little bit careful where you point it. Yep, yeah. You know, it's not an enduro bike. Yes, well. But it's amazing where we do go on it. When Stuff. Beautiful. Well, I can tell you this: you don't have to be as careful as where you point the Tenere 660. I can tell you that, mate. Oh, that I was, was up in high, high, high country a couple of couple of weeks ago now, or well, last weekend actually. And uh, yeah. yeah, I was very careful by myself where I took that. You know, so yeah, yeah. I couldn't believe how different they were. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, this compared to the Tenere, this has got power. Yeah. This is actually smooth. Yeah. Um, <laughs> changes gear properly and it steers. Yeah, that's so, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, very much. Tenere up. was just a quiet. It was just as happy on the road doing its thing. Yeah. But this one, you see a car in front of you, you just think, all right, I'm going to nail you. Yeah, that's <laughs> just, right. Just yeah. go scream and yeah. bust it. Yeah, you do need to give them a week's notice with the Tenere. I'll give yeah, you that. Tenere, Very happy yeah. on the road, and it's a touring bike. What you're doing. That's the difference. This is an adventure bike. It's a touring bike. Mind you, you could buy four Tenere's for one of these. Yes, true. Yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we'll wrap it up there, I reckon, Brendan. Yeah. I think we're just get, going to get rained on. I reckon it's beer o'clock, so I think we'll, we might just duck inside and uh, we'll wrap the videoing rain. up and uh, and uh, enjoy a beer, I think. Yeah, Chew some fat. Rain. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
Fancy that. Never rains a pause. <laughs> One minute we're in the sun, think it's going to be too hot, and yeah. then the wind. Yeah, cool, cool. All right, thanks for that, mate. Really appreciate your time. <laughs>